Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. Today, we're going to talk about HCG monotherapy because it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. So we like to keep it simple. We like to keep it safe. We like common sense medicine. So why can't we use HCG monotherapy as a TRT option? Well, it's used for male infertility, short term, because what does it do? Well, human chorionic gonadotrophin is released by the placenta to help maintain pregnancy in females. But we're not using it, obviously, for that reason. We're using it to stimulate sperm production. So what does it do? Well, it's got two subunits, an alpha subunit that mimics luteinizing hormone, TSH and follicle stimulating hormone, and a beta unit which mimics luteinizing hormone. So logically, we want to use HCG to maintain fertility, and that's why it's used. In TRT, it's used because obviously testosterone monotherapy, exogenous testosterone, suppresses the HPG axis. And as you guys know, we like the idea of TRT not to be TRT, but to be hormone replacement therapy, because we know that the benefits of HCG are not only maintaining testicular size and function, but also the neuroendocrine effect, because there are LH receptors in the brain. So HCG monotherapy, why doesn't it work? Well, it should work, but it doesn't work if you understand physiology and pharmacokinetics. Now, LH is released in a pulsatile manner down to the testicles, and it's mainly released at nighttime because why? Your anabolic processes predominate at nighttime and your catabolic processes predominate in the daytime. So HCG, as good as it is, it doesn't mimic physiology because as every drug has to be a stable level, it takes five half-lives. So if the half-life of HCG is 2.1 days, that's about 11 days, 14 days. What are we doing? Well, we're constantly stimulating the testicles to produce testosterone. And what's also in the testicles? Yeah, the aromatase enzyme. So you're gonna get an excess level of estradiol compared to testosterone because you're constantly stimulating the testicles. Now, does that matter in the majority of patients? No, not at all. Now, what do we do to mitigate this excess rise of testosterone creating excess estradiol? Well, you have a slightly suboptimal dose. Now, when patients present to the clinic and they want to retain fertility or they're actively trying to conceive, I actually start them on a slightly higher dose of HCG than I would do for normal testosterone replacement therapy. And I warn them, I say that yes, it's likely gonna create a little bit of excess estradiol. And what we'll do with that is obviously advise you to do what you should be doing, is that's being a healthy human being, that's not rocket science, but it's lost on a lot of people. And again, we see TRT as the opportunity to make the positive changes to your lifestyle, your nutrition, your exercise to be a healthy human being. So we talk about the fact that you're gonna get excess estradiol. Well, what can we do with that outside of lifestyle, nutrition, exercise? Well, you can use daily Tadalafil because it has a mild aromatase inhibitor effect. So that's pretty much a go-to and obviously fertility wise, you're need to get an erection to obviously procreate. So that's a good option. And sometimes we use an aromatase inhibitor. Now we use examastain because it's a suicidal aromatase inhibitor and it's more effective at maintaining good healthy testosterone to estradiol ratios because anastrozole reversively competes and we want a more of a fixed dose response. So what sort of doses do we use? Always the minimum effective dose. Now, we don't normally start somebody off on an aromatase inhibitor with a fertility protocol because we want to see what response the body has to the exogenous medications. But if we were to use a dose, as I've said, it's the minimum effective dose. Now, examastain comes in 25 milligram tablets and its primary use is what? Treating breast cancer in females. And as we've said before, we share the same hormones as females, but we have different amounts and our genes express them in a different way. So we're not females. So what sort of dose do we need as men? Well, if you do need an aromatase inhibitor, well, we tend to start off with a super low dose. And we said females, 25 milligrams a day, and it's the mechanism of action that's important, not what it's used for. So it's gonna prevent the conversion of testosterone to estradiol. 
So 25 milligrams a day. What's our starting dose normally? One milligram every three days. So that's 0.33 milligrams compared to the dose of 25 milligrams. So when we look at medications, as we said before, minimum effective dose, and your dose is gonna be tailored according to effect. We do not wanna cause harm. So we're not gonna crash your estradiol. We're gonna safely and effectively titrate your dose according to effect. So why can't this HCG monotherapy work if we do that? Well, what are you doing with HCG? You're constantly stimulating the LH receptor. And we don't wanna constantly stimulate anything because what happens when you constantly stimulate something? It down regulates, doesn't it? The body is incredibly unique and wonderfully complex and it survives on the concept of balance. You must have contrasting processes in, in order to establish harmony. And if you oversaturate anything in the body, it has a down regulatory effect and it has causes harm. So again, in theory, it might work. In clinical practice, it doesn't work. So we've got some super young guys with more of a secondary picture and they're all on HCG and they're on a very small dose of testosterone. Now we have a typical starting dose for the young guys and it's lower than the older guys. So we titrate typically down. We have some guys on as little as five milligrams of testosterone and cypionate daily alongside 100 IU of HCG. Now, Again, minimum effective dose. We need to respond to your numbers and we need to respond to how you feel. So everybody talks about how you feel. Yep, super important, but also super important to have a holistic approach and understand physiology and pharmacology and act in the best interests of the patient. So short-term gain, long-term loss. What we sometimes see in guys on testosterone and HCG who are super young, who have got functioning testicles is they have a super positive response to the HCG and their four to five week bloods are massively elevated testosterone levels. And what happens at 10 to 11 weeks? Yeah, the level's lower. Why is that? Because the receptor's down-regulated. Again, you need to be under the care and supervision of somebody that knows what they're doing. Because again, on face value, some of these things would work, but they don't work because physiology is more complex and our feeble brains are feeble. Concentrate on physiology and psychology to influence your emotions. And again, don't take the path of least resistance thinking it's gonna give you a maximum reward if that reward is not sustainable. It is minimum effective dose, carefully titrated according to effect to act in the best interests of who? Yeah, you, the patient, and we will do that. We won't sell you on false promises. There are no shortcuts. We will always act in your best interests to allow you to do what? Yeah, you guessed it. Go earn your award.